Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to put together a ramp sink. I have all the pieces laid out here, so let me show you those first. Here are the sink parts set up. Getting ready for gluing together. I, like I said before, I glue these together in, in sections. This is the bottom with the front lip that goes towards the front of the sink. Put all this on the bottom and you won't see it. This is the, the sink. This is, these are the sides. This is the back. Now this piece you will see. This and this are all been sanded. They're ready to go. And I glued this piece onto the back because I want this all to be in one piece. And set up. You can see I've got little tabs on here so I can put clamps. I want this to be nice and tight. We've got some wood blocks here that keep it the right height. So once I get these two pieces together, then I'll just have the back, front, the sides, and the bottom that I can all glue together at one time instead of all of those pieces being separate. So I put tape anywhere I don't want to get the glue. So as soon as I glue it, I'm gonna scrape out this glue in the, the corner and I'm gonna clean it with alcohol and a paper towel. It's all glued up now. The hardest part is cleaning this inside, this inside corner here. Cause you need glue to come out of there. But if you get too much glue, it gets on the, the surface of the sink. And then you can't clean it off and 
you're left sanding the whole sink again, but it's almost impossible to sand those inside corners. But these are pretty clean. Might have to do a little bit of touch up down here in the corner. There's a little white dot in this corner. But overall, that's it. The next step would be to grind the, the outside of the sink, make it smooth, make it look nice. And then it's ready to flatten the top. So it's nice and flat. It should be nice and flat anyway because we cut everything on the CNC, but I'll make a sink nice and flat. And then we're going to install it. There's the countertop still sitting on the CNC. I wanted to show you the back side for the underside of the sink. See all these little Corian tabs? I just super glue those on. And so it pinches it tight and keeps that rabbit nice and tight. I have the sink all sanded down. Nice and smooth. The sink's all finished. I sanded it down. And now we're going to take the, the drain assembly with the slope in it. It doesn't have the, the pipe glued to it yet, but I still want to get this thing uh, where these holes are here. I want to get it perfectly centered there and lined up. And I'm going to drill holes through there to get an indicator mark. This is a quarter inch hole. I'm gonna use a quarter inch drill and I'm just gonna drill it down just a little bit, just a tad bit so I mark, so I mark the bottom of the sink. Now that I have the, the pilot holes located by drilling through this hole, I can take this drain assembly off and these are all marked here. So I'm gonna take a drill with a quarter inch bit on it and a collar so I don't drill all the way through the half inch material. I'm also going to use an air hose to blow out the dust from around the bed because this collar keeps the dust in here and it expands the hole if it, if it gets clogged up. I finished drilling the holes. They line up perfect with the, the drain assembly. Now I have to put a brass insert in the hole. This is a 10 30 second to match this up with my 10 30 second machine screw. It's a three quarter inch screw. So it'll pass through, it'll pass through the drain assembly there. You can see that's the perfect height. Let me uh, install these. Here's a tool that goes down inside there. That's to set the brass insert into the material. You would put silicone all the way around the perimeter, nice continuous bead. It's on there like that. And you just go right around there. This screw will just go straight down all the way and sit all the way nice and tight to the bottom of the drain assembly. And you don't need any washers. Should be perfectly fine. Now we need to assemble this drain assembly as a drain cover. So let's, we've got the 
the Corian glue. We need to put this tailpipe inside the ring. Now we need to clean these pieces because if you don't, they're not going to stick so great. Make sure you clean the ring and the tailpipe so it's nice and clean. Why use alcohol or acetone? This is acetone here. We're gonna, again, we're going to use Corian glue. Make sure both are coming out of there. The first thing I do is I put two beads around this rabbit that's in the ring. And I go around twice because I want to make sure that if there's any wet spots in the glue that it'll dry properly. So then just pull this down tight. Just like that. Make sure it's seated all the way down in there. And then we're going to take another bead and put it on here. And again, I go around there twice. That's perfect. And just slide that down on there. And I use four clamps to get it nice and tight around there. There it goes. You want to make sure you have a little bit of squeeze out all the way around. That way you know it's sealed. And then you're going to flip this over and you're going to want to clean this out here. Because once it's once it's cured, you're going to have a tough time cleaning inside that, that drain pipe hole. And that's perfect, just like that. And of course, once it's all cured, we've got the slope, we've got the holes, everything's ready to go, and then this, when this cures, we'll be able to mount it to the bottom of the sink. On to the next step. The sinks are now mounted and ready for machining around the edge of the sink. You can see those little tabs that I put on so that I could clamp it down tight. Those go all the way around. I'm going to be using a trim bit with a small bit on this, I'm sorry, a small bearing. Here is the next trim bit, and if you can see, this bearing is tiny. Problem with this router bit is that the bearing doesn't spin very well. I oil it up every time I use it. So you've got to only use it in the inside corners, otherwise it'll, this bearing will get stuck and burn a line into your material. So just use it for the corners. I want to give you a close-up of the way the trim bit cuts. Nice and smooth. You need a brand new bit, a really sharp bit, and it'll cut flush. You don't want the half inch thickness of the material overhanging into the sink. You want it to cut down nice. You want it to cut all those little chips off. This router bit has an eighth inch radius on it and I'll go around the inside portion of the sink. Well, this is a 3M, but it's a dual action sander. It's five inch. This is a 320 grit sandpaper. For the last uh, about an hour and a half, I've been sanding these sinks. They're very difficult to get smooth, but I sanded them with 320 grit sandpaper. Now I've got to work on, on uh, all of these corners here. 
I've got to get them smoothed out so they go from basically a square corner that the sink has up into a radius where the top of the countertop has a radius because that's the way the, the router bit made it. So I have this little bit right here and it pointed and I'm gonna stick that down into the square part of the sink and I'm gonna feather it up and in to this section right here. So this is round right here and this down in here is square. That seemed to do the trick. This is 220 grit sandpaper. I hope you can see that on camera. So I got a little white spot right there, but I still have to sand this side. And this down here is just dust. But it does blend in. You spend enough time sanding it. So half of one corner down. I got seven and a half more to go. I finally finished this countertop. You can see that it's all sanded. The dark color makes it very difficult to sand, get all the same color, a uniform finish. But you can see it's doable. I sanded this top with 400 grit sandpaper and a maroon scotch bright. And again, if you've seen earlier on in the video where I said I had already sanded all the sink parts, you basically have to re-sand everything because there's just scratches and stuff and it gets uneven and it doesn't look it doesn't look consistent. But you can see this will give a nice satin finish. You can kind of see the shine across it. It's not gonna be shiny, but it's not a matte finish, the 400 grit. The maroon scotch bright kind of tones it down a little bit. Anyway, so that's the entire process of making a ramp sink, getting it all prepped and ready to go, gluing it together, and then mounting it onto a countertop. And that's the finished product. So it looks really neat when they're all done. Very modern looking. And it's cool because you can make it with a Corian material or any solid surface material for that matter. And it just really looks neat. So the biggest hurdle with all this is it's very time consuming and the drain. If you can't make that drain, you, you're kind of stuck because there's no other way to do it. Uh, I take that back. There is one company that sells them, but sometimes they don't have them in stock. So I'll put the link to the train company in the comments below. So at least you'll be able to buy one if, uh, if you can't make one. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comment below. Uh, hope this helped. Take care.